y'all what's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and today we're going to talk about futuristic and the one video that blew him up what he did on his independent rise that a lot of other independent rappers should keep in mind i keep telling y'all this and of course we got to talk about some of the practical steps that he used to build his fan base let's hop into it so first let's go ahead and get to that video that blew him up nerd raps in Compton. Would you mind? Would you mind if I rap to you guys? Yeah, go ahead. I just wrote a song this morning, and, and I, I this is my first song. I just want to know if, if you guys like it. And you just tell me if it's good or not. Yeah. I'm the most underrated. Everybody saying he's spitting fire like a dragon, nigga. Watch me come and slam. Coming from the basement. Double XL, man. I want the cover. There's no way that I'm not in the conversation. I don't have no patience unless it's patience from playing operation. I'm castrating anybody that's hating. I ain't trying to be famous. I'm just trying to make payments from what I'm making. I'm frustrated, about to go super saiyan. And I'm causing mayhem when I rap. I got a coffin in the back. And if you're talking in the coffins, where you at? I'm sick. I be coughing on a track. I'm exhausted from the raps. I'm trying to kick it with the broth that's on the map. Shit, make her squirt like the holders in a dolphin on his back. But I gotta be cautious in the trap. And I've been to Boston, been to Austin, been to Compton, and been back. Where it's at, I'm sounding like an auction when I snap. At black, cash stacks, no cash stacks, never paying to smash that. If her ass fat, then I treat her like a car. Cause I be all in it, might take her on a trip, but before I drop it off, I gotta wax that. Ah. Binders is keepers, I'm all in they speakers, the word getting out, that boy ah. futuristic. All right, now there's a lot to unpack here, so I'm gonna go a little bit more detailed in this futuristic video. One, what made this content so appealing? Of course, it surprises people in real life, but actually capturing that is a whole nother story. But the brilliant part about this very simple concept is it is remarkable. When I talk about it all the time, something viral that people are gonna talk about and spread, it doesn't have to be high quality in the camera. It doesn't have to be a lot of cars or just something expensive for the video. This was a very simple, cheap video to execute. So when you take that concept, it starts to create some kind of conversation in itself because people want to see the people's reaction to him rapping alone. Even if he was trash, but he was a nerd rapping, some people would want to watch it. Think about the fact that people do reaction videos. They actually built a reaction video into the prank video basically because that's how a lot of prank videos work but also they captured it in the title nerd raps in compton that juxtaposition makes people curious as well but there's still some extra things that actually help this video for one awareness big dolls tv is where this was posted because futuristic did this in collaboration with that channel his channel was already popping and we're gonna get a little bit deeper into why this unique case is something independent rappers should look at more often in a bit. But first, I also got to mention that the best thing the Futuristic did for itself was actually dropping their song the day that that video dropped. Why? Because not only were they curious to see the actual song and they kind of like the verse, but they were just more curious to see more from this interesting nerd rapper guy. But you even get that sensation from watching as well. You're like, yo, this nerd dude is dope. I want to see what else he does. And that's only part of it. The realest reason on why it's so important that that video was dropped the day of is because he had to take advantage of that spotlight that he had while he had it. It would be okay too if the video would just already happen to be out, but to not have it out, you're risking losing a lot of attention and a lot of free organic reach that you can't get back. I just happened to be talking to somebody not too long ago who had a friend that was a Vine star back in the day. That guy posted his music in the video and the video went crazy like real crazy, Taylor Swift reposted it crazy. But the problem was his song hadn't been released yet and it still had to be mixed and mastered and even though he rushed the process, it was still two weeks before the song actually got out. So by the time it was already released, millions of people had already seen it and moved on to other things. People were hitting him up initially, yo, where's this song, where's this song, asking what song is this, what song is this, but he missed a window. You don't want to risk that. On the other hand, Futuristic, who dropped his video the same day as the prank video was dropped. Yeah. What did you do? What did you sit down and think? How did you process how I'm going to make this happen? Um, It kind of happened. I don't want to say by luck, but it just happened. I did one prank called Nerd Raps in Compton. Yeah. And it just took off from there. And and people just, they saw the Nerd Raps in Compton and I, I put out the greatest the same day. Basically, I just went up to strangers and rapped the greatest Yeah. Uh, as a nerd. And so it kind of took off and I put out the music video the same day and both of them like one got like 400,000 views first day like the prank and then the actual video got like 300,000. So I was like, you know, oh, this is this is something. And then even still later on when he came out with the album as seen on the Internet, I popped off from doing that nerd rap. Yeah. And what I did was I collabed with a big YouTuber and 
I dropped my video on the same day and we cross promoted them. With Devon Terrell? Uh, no, oh, no, with oh. uh, Big Dogs TV. He's like okay. a prankster. Okay. So we did that and I just got hella fans from it. So I was like, if I could do that one time, what would happen if I did a whole album and every song was like that? Uh -huh. Where I grabbed the biggest people from the internet that they're not even in music necessarily, just big people from the internet and incorporated them into the album. Yeah. And did pranks and skits and all this different stuff for their channels and cross promoted. So that's what As Seen on the Internet is, man. It's, it's, it's music and then there's a, a ton of visual stuff that goes with it with all these big people that kids are following on the internet. Uh -huh. That way he can bring in those new audiences, give himself new exposure. That's how powerful he realized that concept was. And what's really interesting, these influencers, a lot of these people that he utilized are not necessarily music influencers or music industry influencers. And when you're an independent rapper, your best bet really is building relationships with other types of influencers. To move on to something else that was super simple that Futuristic did that a lot of other independent artists can do early on was opening for other artists. Now, there's a caveat. A lot of people think you can just open for artists and that's gonna boost your career. No, one interesting thing was when it came to Futuristic, he pretty much monopolized the scene. I think it was really just the, the groundwork that I put in in Arizona. Like most of my, all my first sales, I'm sure if I looked back at the sales from that first album, like 90% of them are probably from Arizona. It's because I literally opened up for everybody and I was moving tickets. Like it's crazy. Like when I go on tour and I have a local open up, they'll sell like, 25 tickets or 30 tickets and we're like, oh, that's good. But like I was selling like 300, 400 tickets to shows. Wow. Back in like 2010 and 11. Okay, know? as an opener. As an opener, yeah. Okay. To where like I was damn near selling out the show by myself. He didn't just open for one big artist one time and then see some interesting boosts from it. He had to do it again and again and again. He was opening for pretty much, as he said, everybody that was coming into his city or really just Arizona in general. He was hopping on show after show after show and to think if you see this guy enough opening before people, you really start to know him and become familiar with him. So that's something that really helps, but he was actually doing that to the point that it was hurting him for a second as well. And this is when we talk about the knowing your demographic, knowing your target. And like, you weren't really focusing on, I guess like the urban Lane, you were focused more on like the college kids. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. Cause I did, like I said, I opened up for everybody. So like my first few shows, I was opening up for like this cat named Willie North Pole. Uh, I did like some stuff with YG. And and I actually got offered a Nipsey Hustle show and I, I took it and then I backed out last minute and that show ended up getting shot up. Mm. So and like three or four people got shot, it was crazy. So basically I just did shows like that and something bad would always happen and the crowd wouldn't vibe with me because I wasn't hood as fuck. <laughs> right. So I was just like, this ain't for me. I need to just get my own fans. This didn't necessarily mean that he was only focusing on literal colleges, but it was just him starting to realize that there's a certain type of crowd that liked his music and he needed to back away and stop doing every show just to do every single show. Even look at the fact that he did the nerd rap series. Yeah, that was a caricature, like a character that they built for that particular prank, but there was some kind of similarity in kind of who he was and how he presents himself still when we think about the interest of his demographic. Look at the fact that his videographer's YouTube page is called Buff Nerds TV. Look at the fact that he had videos like Minecraft. Call of Duty. All these things come together to really speak to a certain demographic, but he wasn't able to fully capitalize off of it till he realized where he needed to focus in terms of who he performed for him and who he got in front of in general. So to take all that and just mention four dope things that Futuristic did that was really helpful in his career was one, opening for other artists and not just doing it, doing it on such a level that he was opening for so many people that the people who like this person and this person and this person got to see him three times because he was opening up for everybody. And this strategy is gonna be even more powerful if you're in a state like Arizona or any city where it's not super popping like New York, LA, Atlanta. Why? Because there's just less competition and it's easier to get in front of a lot of people again and again and again using that strategy. Now the second thing that he did was be yourself. And I'm using futuristic words when I say that because that came directly from his realization that, yo, maybe I shouldn't be opening up for Nipsey Hussle. His fan base probably isn't gonna be my fan base. And then another big thing that futuristic said is collaborate with artists that are bigger than you. But I wanna add something else, collaborate with people that are bigger than you because once again, look outside of just artists, 
look at just bigger influencers online in general and how do you build those relationships i can't tell you exactly because i don't know what city you're in and what city the people you're trying to get in contact with are in and i don't know what kind of demographic what type of influencers all those little nuances but what you can do is take the fundamentals that anybody is telling you or the master music networking guy take those fundamentals and target them at whoever you're trying to get to and use your own discretion in what you utilize for that person because every situation is going to be slightly different there's so many more interesting things i could talk about when it comes to futuristic i love his independent grind the fact that he was going on tours and losing money at first but i want to know what you guys think so go ahead and drop them comments let me know and if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button if you like it you might as well share it and if you're not subscribed you know what to do hit that subscribe button